Horror Fanatic here, and I'm exhausted. So let's do this. This month, I am going to talk about Let Me In, or Let the Right One In, by John Linquivist. And if I butchered that name, sorry. Now, um, warning, there are probably going to be some spoilers. Let Me In is kind of a basic vampire story. Overall, I found the story decent, but a little generic as far as vampires go. There was a number of interesting things done with the idea, and I did enjoy the deviations. My issue mainly comes from... It felt the character was kind of bland to me, and... Meh? In fact, I had that problem with a lot of the characters in this book. I simply didn't find them all that interesting. And maybe that's on me, and it probably actually is. I believe a lot of this has to do with, I just feel it didn't translate the smoothest. Also, there was a strong disconnect for me when it came to the locations in the novel, as I'm not from Sweden, and I wish I did. I wish I knew more about the country to better understand this novel. I under I'm pretty sure I would have gotten a lot more of the humor and the subtle nuance that I could feel was there, but I was just unable to grasp. My main issue, again, is just... I found the characters either bland or unlikable, and this it goes extremely towards like all of the adults in the novel, mainly Oscar's parents. And while it does create a very real depiction of a, well, sad to say modern family, but of a separated home. And I also enjoyed its fair depiction of alcoholism because many of the characters in this novel are alcoholics. Uh, tertiary characters, actually. With a few of the minorish, minorish ones also being drunks. But they all felt real with their struggles. I also have issue with the children in this book that surround Oscar. Um, personally, being someone who was bullied, I wanted to sympathize with them more. But I couldn't, and I don't know why. But I think it was mainly due to the fact that Oscar feels just like a serial killer from the get-go by getting a knife and stabbing shit in the woods. Like, by shit I mean a tree. But, you know, I understand the need to release frustrations and act out fantasies. Also, it could be that I had a disconnect from this book, having watched the film, the US film version, which I absolutely loved, but I had the same problems with. In this one, the character of Ellie as well, I liked it more than in the movie. The fact that, um, spoiler, Ellie was actually a boy during creation, during its creation, well, transformation to a vampire, I don't know how best to phrase that in regards to this particular novel. My issue with Ellie is there became a point where the character's vampirism, how it became, and her struggle with it, became secondary to other aspects of her character which played pretty heavily into the final, uh, uh, the final arc of the book, I'd say. I also didn't like... Harkin? Hacken? I'm bad with names. Ellie's older caretaker towards the beginning of the novel. Um, I enjoyed a lot of it, like, especially the parts where it was reflecting from his perspective while he was healing in the hospital. Well, healing is the wrong phrase, but it's the one we're going to go with as it felt it added a lot more depth to the character, though I did love the charm and how they twisted it for the U.S. movie. Another issue that bugs me with the characters is there's just so many that it kind of bogged down, and I started having trouble by the end fully separating all of the characters. This is an issue that would be easily covered through an other rereading of the novel, and I'm positive I'd gain more from it, though I have no plans to revisit this novel. In fact, the character I liked the most awkwardly enough, is only in about three pages, and it's a squirrel. In regards to the dread location of the novel, I really did like it. Um, it felt like I was getting a, like, a distant view of how life might be in Sweden, with the description of the tenements, and the traveling on the subway, and frozen lakes and fjords, and I really enjoyed that. And I felt it was a the cold snow was a wonderful backdrop to this story. 
And I don't think that aspect of this book could have could have been done any better. I also liked Virginia in this book a lot more than I did in the film. The same with Lack? Locke? I'm again bad with names. Who was again very likable and like I did enjoy the character. He was a fair depiction like a like very fair depiction of an alcoholic. His character actually reminded me a lot of Steinbeck's novel of Mice and Men with his desire to own a farm because, you know, all men desire to own land. And it made him grounded and real. And I felt more for that character than I did for any other in the novel. Overall, the book was a quick and easy read. I was able to cover the whole novel in about four and a half days with casual reading. And it was a good four and a half days spent. But, it's hard to formulate into words what I didn't like about this book, while still, overall, having a positive experience from it. Honestly, as a horror novel, though, it didn't work for me. I never felt any dread or concern for most of the characters. I wasn't really ever drawn into the world, and it always felt like I was an outsider to it, which might be the writer's intention, though I don't know. One thing I did keep finding myself asking about while I was reading this book was Ellie stated that she needed live blood from a living person. So the person had to be alive when the blood was taken. That was pretty much the only requirement. Blood from a dead body didn't count. So Hacken had to bleed people while they were alive for her to consume the blood. That said, we live in a modern era with blood banks, all of that blood being taken from normal people. Wouldn't it have been easier for him to rob a blood bank? There would have been more blood on hand. I see that as a much more simple solution, and one that is never even thought to be addressed. All that said, I did like a lot of the deviations from the normal vampire mythos. Um, I loved that sunlight felt like a physical force literally pressing down upon vampires. Like the, the sun was upset for, showing, for them showing themselves in its light. And that, like, how they burned is also amazing. I also love that the heart is the center of the infection and, in fact, contains its own um, brain tissue. And I felt that was a great detail to add that while didn't depth add depth that much, it added a lot of um, character and a lot of ambience and a lot of uh, tangibility to... Ellie and to the other infected. Um, the idea that the virus itself was a living thing with its own desire to live, and a vampire was basically a balance of the two, the desire to feed to live, with the human desire to not want to die. Another point that I liked that Ellie mentioned was the passage of time, being over 200 years old, and her want to return home, but inability to because his home from his childhood no longer exists. Where it once stood, there's now a roundabout, and the stream in which his mother washed their clothes had since dry, dried up and just become a green swath of land. And I liked that. I like that the, the landscape has aged with Ellie. I also did really enjoy Ellie and Oscar's friendship, and how it took time, like, sure that he was, like, friends from the get-go, but they had their ups and downs, and Oscar did, however mildly, have an internal debate about their friendship and his desire to be with Ellie. And I enjoyed that. But once again, as I have to look at this as a horror novel, it didn't really do much for me. It didn't leave any after effects. It didn't tint or shade my sleeping or waking life like other novels have. And for all the stated reasons were the reasons I was originally avoiding the novel. But it came heavily recommended to me by a number of friends. So I decided to give it a whirl and it was worth the read, but never a revisit. So that's all for Let Me In or let the right one in. And next month, I'm going to be moving back again to my favorite author, 
Stephen King and read a novel of his that I haven't read since middle school. Carrie, see you next month.